Hi, welcome to the part three of the forensic analysis of Teresa and Marley van Breda regarding the van Breda murders. Just a quick recap, as discussed, hair that was straight and blonde, approximately 200 millimeters long or slightly longer, is found in the hand of Marley van Breda. Teresa van Breda had been struck twice on her head with an axe. The first strike hit her temporal side of her head on the right hand side which then split into two fractures. She was then struck again on the right hand side front right hand side of her head. Marley van Breda was struck on her front left hand side of her head. On the bottom left hand side of the screen you see a stairwell that leads to the ground floor. The bodies of Teresa and Marley van Breda were found on the beginning of the left hand side part of the balcony railing that you can see there. You would have seen their bodies if they were lying there. Also what you will notice is in the background is a door that's been circled in red. That's the bedroom door that Teresa and Martin van Breda shared that bedroom. If you were staring or standing inside their bedroom looking out in the distance you would see a door that's closed. That's a door to another bedroom. That's where Rudy and Martin were murdered. At approximately 4 o'clock in the morning on the 27th of January 2015, Teresa von Breda must have left her bedroom and gone to investigate what was going on in that other bedroom. As mentioned, Martin von Breda and Rudy von Breda were murdered in that bedroom with an axe. What follows next is what I believe is the chain of events that went on. I believe the attacker that killed Martin and Rudy van Breda came out of that bedroom with the axe in his hand and Teresa van Breda then wanted to make an escape which would have been to turn an immediate left down that stairwell. As mentioned the stairwell is on the bottom left hand corner of the screen at the moment. So she would have tried to run down that stairwell. The attacker with her axe would have then tried to swing his axe at Teresa. But I do believe that Teresa was being prevented from running down that stairwell. The reason why I believe that is because Teresa and Marley van Breda bodies were both found very close to that stairwell. So the question is, how did an attacker with an axe prevent both of them escaping down that stairwell? Now, if the attacker had exited that bedroom with the axe in his hand and then swung it at Teresa, who was trying to make an escape but was being prevented from doing so, assuming the attacker missed Teresa with the first blow, the attacker would have hit the second assailant, which would have been the figure on the left hand side facing Teresa, and then they would have been struck on their left hand side of their head. So any part of or, or the left hand side of their body. Teresa van Breda, as mentioned by the forensic report by the forensic pathologist, that she was struck on her right hand side of her temporal side of her head with the first blow that then split into two separate cracks and then she was struck towards the front part of her head with the second strike. If there was in fact an altercation such as this between Teresa van Breda and a second unknown assailant. 
what you would expect to find are the, is the following forensic evidence. Potentially skin under the nails of Teresa von Bada. Potentially hair that Teresa had pulled out from the assailant that she would have in her hand. Or potentially fibers of that person's clothing on her clothing. If the other assailant had been injured, you would also expect to find things like skin under the nails, hair, fibers of the other person, i.e. Teresa, with whom they had had an altercation. So just a quick dis description again of what that hair was that was found in Madli van Bedar's hand. It was straight and blonde and approximately 200 millimeters in length and longer. What I'm reading is this is from the actual testimony given by forensic experts in the actual court case. What is interesting is that testimony was given that mildly in terms of pictures and extensive evidence of defensive wounds I postulated that she was in a more severe altercation with the attacker. What's interesting as well is that the hair that was found in Marli van Bedar's hand would have been what she was holding onto before she was struck with the axe. And how we know that is she was in an altercation. So with that altercation, her hands would have opened, closed, etc. as she's whatever, fighting back, so the hair probably would have come loose. But for that hair to be an entangled in her fingers as that implies that she was physically holding on to the hair of somebody when she was struck with that axe. Also, what's interesting is, read on the second paragraph, it says, she most likely fell forward on her face with abrasions on her nose and bridge and also more to the left side where she sustained contusions, contusions or bruises. In other words, she was struck on the right hand side of her head with the axe and she fell to the left, which implies obviously the attacker was on her right hand side and also what direction the force was moving in. So just end off a quick summary of where Marli van Breda was struck with the axe. She was struck on her, on her front left hand side of her head as evidenced in that photograph there. Teresa van Breda was struck on her right hand side of her head as evidenced there.